Hello everyone today we are going to start the 6th chapter of our book India's struggle for independence by Bipin Chandra this is Ujwal Kashyap and I welcome you at I desire UPSC socio religious reforms and the national awakening I regret to say wrote Raja Ram Mohan Roy in 1828 that the present system of religion adhered to by the hindus is not well calculated to promote their political interest the distinctions of caste introducing innumerable divisions and subdivisions among them has entirely deprived them of patriotic feeling and the multitude of religious rites and ceremonies and the laws of purification have totally disqualified them from undertaking any difficult enterprise it is i think necessary that some change should take place in their religion at least for the sake of their political advantages and social comfort written at a time when indians had just begun to experience the intellectual and cultural turmoil that characterized social life in 19th century india this represented the immediate indian response the british conquest and the consequent decimation of colonial culture and ideology had led to an inevitable introspection about the strengths and weaknesses of indigenous culture and institutions the response indeed was varied but the need to reform social and religious life was a commonly shared conviction the social base of this quest which has generally but not altogether appropriately been called the renaissance was the newly emerging middle class and the traditional as well as western educated intellectuals the socio culture regeneration in 19th century india was occasioned by the colonial presence but not created by it the spread of reform embraced almost the whole of india beginning with the efforts of raja ram mohan roy in bengal leading to the formation of brahmo samaj in 1828 apart from the brahmo samaj which has branches in several parts of the country the paramhans mandali and the prarthana samaj in maharashtra and the arya samaj in punjab and north india were some of the prominent movements among the hindus there were several other regional and caste movements like the caste sabha in uttar pradesh and the sharin sabha in punjab the backward castes also started the work of reformation with the satya sodak samaj in maharashtra and sri narayan dharm paripalan sabha in kerala the ahmadiya and aligarh movement the singh sabha and the rehnumai masde asan sabha represented the spread of reform among the muslims the sikh and the parsis respectively despite being regional in scope and content and confined to a particular religion their general perspectives were remarkably similar they were regional and religious manifestations of a common consciousness although religious reformation was a major concern of these movements none of them were exclusively religious in character strongly humanist in inspiration the idea of other worldliness and salvation were not a part of their agenda instead their attention was focused on worldly existence raja ram mohan roy was prepared to concede the possible existence of the other world mainly due to its utilitarian value akshay kumar dat and iswar chand vidyasagar 
were agnostics who refused to be drawn into any discussion or supernatural questions. The meaning of agnostic is a person who believes that nothing is known or can be known of the existence or nature of God. Asked about the existence of God, Vidya Sagar quipped that he had no time to think about God since there was much to be done on earth. Bankim Chan Chatterjee and Vivekanand emphasized the secular use of religion and use spirituality to take cognizance of the material conditions of human existence. Given the interconnection between religious beliefs and social practices, religious reformation was a necessary prerequisite for social reform. The Hindu meets his religion at every turn, in eating, in drinking, moving, sitting, standing. He is to adhere to sacred rules, to depart from which is sin and impiety. Similarly, the social life of Muslims was strongly influenced by religious tenets. The meaning of tenet is a principle or belief, especially one of the main principles of a religion or philosophy. Religion was the dominant ideology of the times and it was not possible to undertake any social action without coming to grips with it. Indian society in the 19th century was caught in a vicious wave created by religious superstitions and social obscuratism. The meaning of obscuratism The practice of deliberately preventing the facts or full detail of something from becoming known. Hinduism, as Max Weber observed, has become a compound of magic, animism and superstition and abominable rites like animal sacrifice and physical torture has replaced the worship of God. The meaning of animism is the attributes of a living soul to plants, inanimate object and natural phenomena. The meaning of abominable is causing moral revulsion. The priests exercised an overwhelming and indeed unhealthy influence on the minds of the people. Idolatry and polytheism helped to reinforce their position. As suggested by Raja Ram Mohan Rai, their monopoly of spiritual knowledge and of ritual interpretation imparted a deceptive character to all religious Systems. The faithful lived in submission not only to God, the powerful and unseen, but even to the whims, fancies, and wishes of the priests. There was nothing that religious ideology could not persuade people to do. Women even went to the extent of offering themselves to priests to satisfy their carnal pleasures. The meaning of carnal age relating to physical, especially sexual needs and activities. Social conditions were equally depressing. The most distressing was the position of women. The birth of a girl was unwelcome, her marriage a burden, and her widowhood inauspicious. Attempts to kill girl infant at birth were not unusual. Those who escaped this initial brutality 
were subjected to the violence of marriage at a tender age often the marriage was a device to escape social ignominy and hence marital life did not turn out to be a pleasant experience the meaning of ignominy is public shame or disgrace an 80 year old brahmin in bengal had as many as 200 wives the youngest being just 8 year old several women hardly had a married life worth the name since their husbands participated in nuptial ceremonies for a consideration and rarely set eyes on their wives after that the meaning of nuptial is relating to marriage or weddings yet when their husband died they were expected to commit sati which raja ram mohan rai described as murder according to every shastra if they succeeded in overcoming this social coercion they were condemned as widows to life long misery neglect and humiliation another debilitating factor was caste the meaning of debilitating is making someone very weak and inform it sought to maintain a system of segregation hierarchically ordained on the basis of ritual status the rules and regulations of caste hampered social mobility fostered social divisions and sapped individual initiatives the meaning of ordain is make a priest or minister confer holy orders on the meaning of sap is gradually weaken or destroy above all was the humiliation of untouchability which militated against human dignity the meaning of militate is be a powerful or conclusive factor in preventing there were innumerable other practices marked by constraint credulity status authority bigotry and blind fatalism rejecting them as features of a decadent society the reform movement sought to create a social climate for modernization the meaning of decadent is characterized by a reflecting a state of moral or cultural decline in doing so they referred to a golden past when no such malaise existed the 19th century situation was the result of an accretionary process a distortion of a once ideal past the reformers vision of the future however was not based on this idealization it was only an aid and an instrument since practices based on faith cannot be challenged without bringing faith itself into question hence raja ram mohan roy demonstrated that sati had no religious sanction vidya sagar did not take up his pen in defense of widow marriage without being convinced about scriptural support and dayanand based his anti casteism on vedic authority this however did not mean a subjection of the present to the past nor a blind resurrection of tradition the dead and the buried maintained mahadev govind ranade the doyen of reformers in maharashtra are dead 
buried and burnt once for all and the dead past cannot therefore be revived except by a reformation of the old materials into new organized forms neither a survival of the past nor a total break with tradition was contemplated the meaning of contemplate is look thoughtfully for a long time at two important intellectual criteria which informed the reform movements were rationalism and religious universalism social relevance was just by a rationalist critic it is difficult to match the uncompromising rationalism of the early raja ram mohan roy or akshay kumar dat rejecting supernatural explanations raja ram mohan roy affirmed the principle of causality linking the whole phenomenal universe to him demonstrability was the sole criterion of truth in proclaiming that rationalism is our only perceptor akshay kumar went a step further all natural and social phenomena he held could be analyzed and understood by purely mechanical processes this perceptive not only enabled them to adopt a rational approach to tradition but also to evaluate the contemporary socio religious practices from the standpoint of social utility and to replace faith with rationality in the brahmo samaj it led to the repudiation of the infallibility of the vedas and in the aligarh movement to reconciliation of teaching of islam with the needs of the modern age the meaning of repudiation is rejecting of a proposal or idea the meaning of infallibility is the quality of being infallible the inability to be wrong holding that religious tenets were not immutable sayyid ahmed khan emphasized the role of religion in the progress of society if religion did not keep pace with and meet the demands of the time it would get fossilized as in the case of islam in india the meaning of tenets is a principle or belief especially one of the main principles of a religion or philosophy the meaning of immutable is unchanging over time or unable to be changed the meaning of fossilized is preserved to become a fossil the perspectives on reform were not always influenced by religious considerations a national and secular outlook was very much evident in posing an alternative to prevalent social practices in advocating widow marriage and opposing polygamy and child marriage akshay kumar was not concerned about religious sanction or whether they existed in the past his arguments were mainly based on their effects on society instead of depending on the scriptures he cited medical opinion against child marriage he held very advanced ideas about marriage and family courtship before marriage partnership and equality as the basis of married life and divorce by both law and custom in maharashtra as compared to other religions there were less dependence on religion 
as an aid to social reform to Gopal Hari Deshmukh, popularly known as Lokhitwadi. Whether social reforms had the sanction of religion was immaterial. If religion did not sanction these, he advocated that religion itself should be changed as it was made by man and what was laid down in the scriptures need not necessarily be of contemporary relevance. Although the ambit of reforms were particularistic, their religious perspective was universalistic. Raja Ram Mohan Roy considered different religions as national embodiments of universal theism. The meaning of embodiment is a tangible or visible form of an idea, quality or feeling. The Brahmo Samaj was initially conceived by him as a universalist church. He was a defender of the basic and universal principles of all religion, the monotheism of the Vedas and Unitarianism of Christianity, and at the same time attacked polytheism and Hinduism and the Trinitarianism of Christianity. Sayyid Ahmed Khan echoed the same idea. All prophets had the same deen, faith, and every country and nation had different prophets. This perspective found clearer articulation in Kesab Chandra Sen's idea. He said, Our position is not that truths are to be found in all religions, but all established religions of the world are true. He also gave expression to the social implications of this universalist perspective. Whoever worships the true God daily must learn to recognize all his fellow countrymen as brethren. Caste would vanish in such a state of society. If I believe that my God is one and that he has created us all, I must at the same time instinctively and with all the warmth of natural feelings look upon all around me, whether Parsis, Hindus, Mohammedans or Europeans as my brethren. The universalist perspective was not a purely philosophic concern. It strongly influenced the political and social outlook of the time. Till religious particularism gained ground in the second half of the 19th century. For instance, Raja Ram Mohan Roy considered Muslim lawyers to be more honest than their Hindu counterparts and Vidya Sagar did not discriminate against Muslim in his humanitarian activities. Even to Bankim, who credited with a Hindu outlook, Dharma rather than religious belongings was the criterion for determining superiority. Yet Muslim yoke and Muslim tyranny were epithets often used to describe the pre-colonial rule. This however was not a religious but a political attitude influenced by the arbitrary character of pre-colonial political institutions. The emphasis was not on the word Muslim but on the word tyranny. This is amply clear from Sayyid Ahmad Khan's description of the pre-colonial system, the rule of the former emperors and rajas was neither in accordance with the Hindu nor the Mohammedan religion. It was based upon nothing but tyranny 
and oppression the law of might was that of right the voice of the people was not listened to the yardstick obviously was not religious identity but liberal and democratic principles this however does not imply that religious identity did not influence the social outlook of the people in fact it did very strongly the reformers emphasis on universalism was an attempt to, to contain with it however faced with the challenge of colonial culture and ideology universalism instead of providing the basis for the development of a secular ethos retreated into religious particularism the 19th century witnessed a cultural ideological struggle against the backward elements of traditional culture on the one hand and the fast hegemonizing colonial culture and ideology on the other the initial reforming efforts represented the former in the religious sphere they sought to remove idolatry polytheism and priestly monopoly of religious knowledge and to simplify religious rituals they were important not for purely religious reasons but equally for their social implications they contributed to the liberation of the individual from conformity born out of fear and from uncritical submission to the exploitation of the priests the dissemination of religious knowledge through translation of religious text into vernacular languages and the right granted to the laity to interpret scriptures represented an important initial breach in the stranglehold of misinterpreted religious dogmas the simplification of rituals made worship a more intensely personal experience without the mediation of intermediaries the individual was thus encouraged to exercise his freedom the socially debilitating influence of the caste system which perpetuated social distinctions was universally recognized as an area which called for urgent reform it was morally and ethically abhorrent more importantly it militated against patriotic feelings and negated the growth of democratic ideas the meaning of abhorrent is inspiring disgust and loathing militate means be a powerful or conclusive factor in preventing negate make in effective raja ram mohan roy initiated in ideas but not in practice the opposition which became loud and clear as the century progressed ranade dayanand and vivekanand denounced the existing system of caste in no uncertain terms while the reform movements generally stood for its abolition dayanand gave a utopian explanation for chatur varna four fold varna's division of hindu society and sought to maintain it on the basis of virtue he deserved to be a brahmin who has acquired the best knowledge and character and an ignorant person is fit to be classed as sudra he argued understandably the most virulent opposition to caste came 
from lower caste movements jyotiba phule and narayan guru were two unrelenting critics of the caste system and its consequences a conversation between gandhi ji and narayan guru is significant gandhi ji in an obvious reference to chatur varnas and the inherent differences in quality between man and man observed that all leaves of the same tree are not identical in shape and texture to this narayan guru pointed out that the difference is only superficial but not in essence the juice of all leaves of a particular tree would be the same in content it was he who gave the call one religion one caste and one god for mankind which one of his disciples sahadran ayappan changed into no religion no caste and no god for mankind the campaign for the improvement of the condition and status of women was not a purely humanitarian measure either no reform could be really effective without change in the domestic conditions the social space in which the initial socialization of the individual took place a crucial role in this process was played by women therefore there could be no reformed men and reformed homes without reformed women viewed from the standpoint of women it was indeed a limited perspective nevertheless it was realized that no country could ever make significant progress in civilization whose females were sunk in ignorance if the reform movement had totally rejected tradition indian society would have easily undergone a process of westernization but the reformers were aiming at modernization rather than westernization a blind initiation of western culture norms was never an integral part of reform to initiate and undertake these reforms which today appear to be modest weak and limited was not an easy proposition it brought about unprecedented mental agony and untold domestic and social tension breaking the bonds of tradition created emotional and sentimental cries for men and women caught between two worlds the first widow remarriage in bengal attracted thousands of curious spectators to the first such couple in maharashtra the police had to give lathis to protect themselves rukum bhai who refused to accept the uneducated and unaccomplished husband virtually unleashed a storm faced with the prospect of marrying a younger girl much against his conviction ranade spent several sleepless nights so did lokhitwadi telang and a host of others who were torn between traditional sentiments and modern commitments several however succumbed to the former but it was out of this struggle that the new men and the new society evolved in india faced with the challenge of the intrusion of colonial culture and ideology an attempt to reinvigorate traditional institutions and to realize the potential of traditional culture developed during the 19th century the meaning of reinvigorate is give new energy or a strength to the initial expression of the struggle against colonial domination manifested itself in the realm of culture as a result of the fact 
that the principles on which the colonial state functioned were not more retrogressive than those of the pre-colonial state. All intrusions into the cultural realm were more intensely felt. Therefore, a defense of indigenous culture developed almost simultaneously with the colonial conquest. This concern embraced the entire cultural existence, the way of life and all signifying practices like language, religion, art and philosophy. Two features characterized this concern, the creation of an alternate cultural ideological system and the regeneration of traditional institutions, the cultivation of vernacular languages, the creation of an alternate system of education, the efforts to regenerate Indian art and literature, the emphasis on Indian dress and food, the defense of religion and the attempts to revitalize the Indian system of medicine, the attempt to probe the potentialities of pre-colonial technology and to reconstruct traditional knowledge were some of the expressions of this concern. The early inkling of this can be discerned in Raja Ram Mohan Roy's debates with the Christian missionaries in the formation and activities of Tattu Bodhini Sabha in the memorial on education signed by 70,000 inhabitants of Madras and in general resentment against the Lex Loki Act. The act proposed in 1845 and <laughs> passed in 1850 provided the right to inherit ancestral property to Hindu converts to Christianity. A more definite circulation however, was in the ideas and activities of later movements, generally characterized as conservative and revivalist, strongly native in tendency, they were clearly influenced by the need to defend indigenous culture against colonial culture hegemony. In this specific historical sense, they were not necessarily retrogressive for Underlying these efforts was the concern with the revival of the cultural personality, distorted if not destroyed by colonial domination. More so because it formed an integral element in the formation of national consciousness. Some of these tendencies, however, were not able to transcend the limits of historical necessity and led to a secretarian and obscurantist outlook. The meaning of obscurantist is a person who deliberately prevent the fact of full or full details of something from becoming known. This was possibly a consequence of the lack of integration between the cultural and political struggles resulting in cultural backwardness despite political advance. The cultural ideological struggle represented by the socio-religious movements was an integral part of the evolving national consciousness. This was so because it was instrumental in bringing about the initial intellectual and cultural break, which made a new vision of the future possible. Second, it was a part of the resistance against colonial cultural and ideological hegemony. Out of this, dual struggle evolved in the modern cultural situation. New men, new homes and new society. If you want to support us in our efforts, kindly subscribe to our channel, like it and share it so that others too get its benefit. Happy learning. Thank you. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat.